bless you, everybody. You are welcome tonight. This is the final leg of this three days fasting. God did and is still doing awesome works. He is the Lord that was and is and is to come. I welcome everybody tonight because I know he has reserved tonight specially to touch our lives, to change our story. I don't know where you're calling him from, but believe me sincerely, whatever you are going through is a process. It's a process. God will use it to launch you to where you are supposed to be. God will use it to launch, it, launch you to where God has ordained your life to be. Isaiah chapter 60. Let me read some verses to you. As the Lord has sent me a word before I bring in our invited minister today. Let me read this to you. Get ready. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come. You know it. But when it comes to you as a rhema, it becomes something else. Arise, shine. Someone needs to listen. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. No more yoke of frustration. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Deep darkness. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon your life. Hey. Instead of those frustrations around you, instead of the frustrating environment, the Lord will rise with his glory. And all eyes will see. I can't hear some people say amen. Are you excited in your room? Are you saying a louder amen? The Gentiles shall seek hey, to your light. They will come to your light. And the kings to the brightness of your soul. It is not someone that is broken, that is frustrated, that will be hearing this and be singing songs. Listen, it says, lift up your eyes. All around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Can you imagine? And your daughters shall be not at your side. Oh, look at verse 5. Then you shall see and become radiant, my God. Those mournful sorrowful, sad-looking faces will disappear and joy will replace it. In the name of Jesus, then you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy. Come on. Your heart shall swell with joy and your heart shall... Are you saying amen to die? Hey, that is your testimony in the month of August. Your heart shall swell with joy. Some people are not yet in the presence of the Lord. They are still far away from him. They are still on the social media. They are still watching the TV. They are still facing the cooking. They are not in the house of the Lord. Wake up and jump into his presence now. He's about to do something that will change your story forever. He says, then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy. That is my portion, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, and the weight of the Gentiles shall come to you. Did you see that? Can you hear the word of the Lord? In verse 15, it says, it says your, your, let me read 11. I need you to understand what God is about to do in your life. He says, therefore, your gates shall be, shall be open continually. It shall not be sure day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of nations. My God, my God, may your gates be open as the minister comes to minister tonight. Hey, may your ears and your eyes be, that is your gate, oh Lord. Your gate will be open tonight. Your gate will be, all you need tonight to access that level is for your gate to be open. I'll stop there. It's for your gate to be open. God is about to unleash the blessing of heaven into your life upon you that like never before. Be ready. Get ready. Get prepared. God has sent a minister of God to bless us tonight. This is his first time in DCC, London. Hey, my God. Bishop Dare David is a trained mineral resources engineer. Now called to God to be one of the prophetic voices of our time. My God with the divine mandate to reform and transform the deformed generation. That's his mandate. He's a regular speaker at conferences, conventions, re revivals, crusades, and campuses across denominational barriers. My God. He's also the presiding bishop of Reformation Pentecostal Church in Ilori, Nigeria. 
This man of God has ministered with me in many places. I know the fire he carries. The grace and the humility in his life has opened greater doors. And I'm telling you the truth tonight, get ready. He has got a word from the Lord for you. He has a word from the Lord for you. Welcome, Bishop Dare David, to DCC London. God bless you, Bishop Dare. Over to you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. I'm so excited to be on this platform. And uh, I really want to appreciate God for this privilege. I want to sincerely with all sense of humility for bringing me here. And uh, it has been a blessing right from day one, day two. And it's my prayer that that blessing will continue even today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And especially, please permit me to appreciate those servant as well. Very Great good. servant of God. I want to greatly, and I want to specially appreciate you, God's servant, in Amen. person of Pastor Ian Kapoko. You know, many times we met, one thing that struck my mind that I called you secretly, I will call you today so that other people can hear. I call you the Encyclopedia of Revelation. <laughs> Encyclopedia uh, of glory Revelation. To glory. I want to thank God for your life. Amen. I want to thank God for your ministry. Amen. I want to thank God for the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit Amen. to bring me right here on this platform. I really appreciate it. And I pray more grace in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray more grace in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to say a very big thank you to the angel in the house. Amen. And who is that angel we are talking about? Is Pastor Mrs. Mukbo. Mukbo. I want to thank God for standing the God with your servant Amen. and allowing God's servant to be a blessing all around the world. Hallelujah. It is my prayer that you will continue to enjoy the blessings of God and you remain lifted in Jesus' name. Amen. And also, I quickly want to appreciate all the Dominion Christian Center big family. Mm. The Almighty God bless every one of you in Jesus' name. You are Amen. special. Amen. You are the best, Amen. I tell you. Amen. Forward ever, backward never. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to appreciate and celebrate all the ministers of God in the house. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for your life. And Amen. most especially, our daddies, our father in faith that God has used for us. Amen. During this season of fasting and prayer, I want to thank God for their life. We celebrate your ministry. We Hallelujah. celebrate your life. Hallelujah. And it is my prayer that God will not do less. Amen. God will do more. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In fact, they have made it so easy for me. In fact, <laughs> if not for the matter of uh, to fulfill all righteousness, I would have said God has said to us, you know, in those days. And, uh, you know, again, you know, Pastor Kukola, you coming again, you know, releasing that word again, I tell you, it's a big blessing. It's Hallelujah. a big blessing. And Lovely I tell you, God. God will bless us all together in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father and our God, we want to say thank you. Hallelujah. What a privilege. It was an awesome honor to be in your presence again today. I want to thank you for the third day. The Bible says in two days, you will revive us. Mm. And in the third day, you will wake us all up. Hallelujah. Thank you because we know that there's going to be an awakening, a Amen. kind of revolution Amen. that has never happened before, Amen. globally, intercontinentally, yes, after this meeting, yes. because all the shackles and yokes of frustration will be destroyed. Amen. And our lives will never be, remain the same in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. I don't know. I just have the leading to sing this song with somebody. If you know it, you can join me in the spirit. It says, he has promised he will never fail, never fail. I will lean on him. I will lean on him. He has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness is forever sure. His faithfulness is forevermore.
God, you are the only one that gives present to those that are present in your presence. Yes, Lord. Therefore, Father, tonight, deliver to us what will be more than us, what will be more than our age, what will be more than our qualification yes, that Lord. will make you want to know that of a truth. We have encountered you and we are not part of them that have just come to entertain, but part of those that have come to command exploit. Amen. Because the Bible says the next expectation of the creatures, they are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Hallelujah. And here we are, emptying ourselves so that you can fill us <inaudible> and then we can reach out <inaudible> and then the harvest will lead to heaven yes. and we shall snap souls from the kingdom of darkness and your name only be glorified thank you father yes At the lord end, you know god let your name be glorified amen let the devil be terrified amen and let we your children be edified and fortified amen in Jesus name have i prayed amen once again the topic before us that we'll be dealing with is breaking the yoke of Frustration. And thank God our fathers and faith have done justice on the first day, on the second day. And today I will be coming from this angle as God has given me revelation. I like you to know it. I like you to understand it. That breaking yoke is part of God's strategy, part of God's plan, part of God's tie to make the devil to be downfunded, to make him look like a nobody to make him look like a failure who has wasted his time all through in our lives. I'd like you to know it and understand them that breaking yoke is not what just existed. It has been the style and the pattern of God for our lives. And so it is our right in God's covenant. It is not that we have tried to intrude into someone else's privacy, but God has decided and has made it possible for us so that we would know that in this world, there are a lot of evil. There are a lot of situations. There are a lot of commotions. No wonder the Bible says for this reason, the son of man was made the manifest that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. So that is to tell us that the devil is on rampage. The devil is ready to do everything possible to send us away from the presence of God. The devil is doing everything so that we can feel frustrated as if God is not on our side. I'd like you to know, look at all the texts that has been given in Luke, in Acts. I will be speaking or considering from the book of the book of Psalm, Psalm 126 and verse 1. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, I want to believe that you know that the process of captivity is a process by which you'll be feeling frustrated. Captivity is not a palatable or a sweet experience. Captivity is a place where one will live like a slave, even when one should be living like a king or as a, like a queen. So I'd like you to know it. I'd like you to understand it, that breaking yoke should not be new to us as children of God, or we should not see it as a burden. I remember, you know, that in Genesis chapter number 27, verse 40, that talks about the story of uh, Esau when he went to the father and the father has released the blessing on Jacob. And then he said to the father, father, can't you give me one more blessing? And then the father said, by your sword, you will live. And then you will serve your brother. He said, but one thing will happen when you get dominion, when you become restless, he said, you will break his yoke off your neck. You will break his yoke up your neck. So yoke has been existing. Thank God our father has explained what it has to do with yoke. Yoke has been existing. It is not a palatable or suitable experience. And I'd like you to know there are several scriptures that has helped us to know that in this world there are challenges. And that's why the Bible did not say we are not going to pass through situations. It said when you pass through fire, it said when you pass through waters, I will be with you. It will not consume you. It is not that you will not go through it. It's a part of the experience. It's part of the aroma. It's part of the journey from story to glory. But it's a pity that in this generation, we love to celebrate the glory, but we don't know what is going on in the story. Before any glory, there is a story. And I'd like you to know and understand, someone is hearing me. No matter what it is you are going through now, that is your story. And that is what people know about you. They don't know your glory. It is only God that knows your glory. And I see God taking you to that point of glory in Jesus' name. So, brethren, what am I saying? I'd like you to now have several scriptures. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. You remember what the Bible says. Paul was there speaking to them. He said, but 
may the grace of God, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have what? Suffered a while. Suffered a while is talking about frustration. You will feel frustrated. So in this journey of faith, there are periods for that. He said, after that we have suffered a while, what we follow? He said that he will perfect, number one. He will establish, number two. He will strengthen, number three. And then he will strengthen you. I see that in your hands. I see God settling all that which has caused you to feel like a frustrated person as if nothing good can come out of you. I see God taking over everything in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I have several scriptures just to help you to understand that breaking yoke is God's style, is God's pattern. That is God's own way. That is all God's own plan. Because he wants the devil to make him look like he has taken over. He has taken advantage. He's the one in charge. So by the time he comes from another dimension, the devil is confused. He doesn't know what to do. And that is why the devil knows that as children of God, we are a miracle time bomb. Hallelujah. He knows we are what? We are a miracle time bomb. And that is why you see when the devil has any opportunity to take advantage of any child of God, he makes sure he quickly wastes that person. Because he knows that God is about to do anything at any time. And I want to encourage you, don't focus on the immediate so that you will not lose the ultimate. The immediate is just temporary. The immediate is not, at least I'm saying, don't focus on what? On the immediate challenges, the immediate situation that we want to post to you as if you should look back, as if you should withdraw, as if you should backslide. No, don't focus on the immediate because if you focus on it, you will lose the ultimate plan of God, the great plan of God, the mighty plan of God. Get ready, know it. And as we continue, the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Don't allow your background to put your back on the ground. There are situations, there are challenges that will make you look as if, God, what is happening to me? God, it is because of where I came from. No, that is not the issue. The issue is that that is God's pattern. So no matter what happens to you, either you are rich or poor, educated or not educated, no matter your, the color of your skin, no matter where you are coming from, anywhere in the world, one area or the other, there will be a day you will need to break a particular yoke in your life. And today we are looking at the issue of what? Frustration. You remember what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 17. The Bible says, for our light affliction, which is just but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of what? Glory. But don't forget that the Bible, the scripture started with our light affliction. So that means there are going to be a time we're going to be seeing affliction. We're going to be going through some period of frustration. Now that is part of his plan. That is part of his time. Is part of God's pattern. So anytime you feel like that, don't let it look to you as if God has forsaken you. Don't let it look up to you as if God has abandoned you. Just like the children of Israel said in Isaiah 49. Isaiah chapter number 49, verse 14 through 16. Isaiah 49, 14 through 16. What is in verse 14? It said, for Zion's sake, said, the Lord has forsaken us. And the Lord has forgotten us. Can you see those two languages there? Those two words there. That is what Zion said. And don't forget that Zion is the place of God. Zion is where God dwells. And what happened? What happened is because they look at their present condition and predicament and said, no, if God has not forgotten us, if God has not forsaken us, then why are we going through these challenges? Why is things not happening? Where was the last time we sang the song of praise, testimony? But I come in the name of the Lord. It is your season. It is your turn for testimonies, for miracles, for major breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, it is our right in God's kingdom. And I see God delivering it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So Zion said, God has forsaken us. Now, don't forget that that was what they read in Psalm 126. The same Zion, the Bible said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that were their dream. So that is to tell you that they have been through frustration to the extent that it has become a lifestyle.
to touch around, it was like a dream. How manage? How can this happen? Someone is hearing my voice. I don't know what you are going through. It has automatically become your lifestyle. Maybe borrowing, maybe begging, maybe crying, maybe sickness, maybe trying everything and it's not working. The hour has come and today is that day. I see a turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ and this shall be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So there are times we feel frustrated and that's why I love that hymn. He says, there's no a friend like a lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's none to heal all our soul diseases. No, not one. Oh, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's no friend like a lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Have you been pursuing a goal that you cannot attain? Even when you have all that it takes, you have the manpower that is people, you have the money, you have the position, but yet nothing is happening. Are you sick in your health? The best doctors has attended to you, the best physician, everything, you have spent money, you have spent everything, but yet nothing is happening. No result, no solution. It's as if nothing is going to happen concerning your issue. I've come to let you know. If Jesus will attend to that woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, with his virtue, then that virtue is in the house tonight. That virtue is here. Virtue that we said to your issue is in the house. So therefore, at any area in your life that you are going through one challenges or the other, the virtue in the name of Jesus will set to every issues, spiritual issues, financial issues, material issues, academical issues, all around issues in your businesses, concerning those contracts you have been believing God for, concerning those international breakthroughs, concerning your ministry, any issue put together, the virtue, the virtue in the name of Jesus will heal you in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, and your testimony will be now in the name of Jesus Christ. You've been trying to solve a problem, and there's no solution. The perception of wasting of time, wasting of resources, wasting of energy will show forth because you have tried everything and it's not working. Then you begin to look at yourself and say, you are wasting, wasting time. No, I've come to let you know. Your waiting time in God is not a waste of time. Your waiting time in God it's not a wasting time. You are not wasting time. The moment you are waiting on God, you are waiting for the best in life. Many years ago, God gave me a formula and it has really, really blessed me and I want to share with you. God said to me, any time that is as if he's delayed in our life, he's putting on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Through a test. So when it's as if God is not doing some things in your life, to you, you think he's late. But the truth is that he's taking you through a test. Now, when you join late and test together, what happens? It becomes latest. Late and test. It becomes what? Latest. So I see you receiving the latest miracle, the latest blessing. I see you having the latest company, having the latest marriage, if you are due for marriage, having the latest covenant wonderful children. I see latest exposure in your life and ministry. I've not come to entertain you or to just make you happy. I'm telling you the mind of God that when it's as if God is late, he's putting you through a test and join late to test together. It becomes the latest. Come on, have the latest of every good thing in life, in destiny, in your career, in ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ, and so shall it be for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So what am I saying, brethren? I've come to let you know as I want to begin to round up that all that I'm saying since this morning is that God's pattern is to break yoke. That's the pattern of God. He appears to break yoke. He appears to break yoke. And today, that which is called frustration in your life, frustration in any area of your life is broken in Jesus name and why am I saying this I like you to know it I like you to understand it that if there's any time to break that yoke it is today 
if there's any time God has started since day before yesterday, he's, he did it yesterday, and he's going to do it again today, and he's going to complete the work. Because after the third day, Jesus resurrected. He's going to complete that work, and your life will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. So therefore, breaking the backbone of frustration, you need to understand that God is a master planner. Say to yourself, my God is a master planner. Say it again, my God is a master planner. Say it again, my God is a master planner. You need to know that. Because it is what you know that make you known. It is what you know about God that make you known. If you don't know, you remain low in life. If you don't know, you what? You remain low in life. So you need to know it. Work with that understanding that God that we serve is a master planner. He's the greatest strategist. No matter how the devil plans it, he always outsmarts and is always ahead of the devil. And that is why you see when we are going through situations, challenges, you see God will just smile. I believe you see, remember the story of Job when the devil came to God. You understand? He said to God, he said, are you not the one that has been protecting Job? Let me deal with him. You understand? And God said, this one, I trust him. He's my boy. Can God say that to you? Can God say that to me? Can God say, she's my daughter? Can God say, he's my boy? God said, don't worry. Do anything you want to do. He's my boy. Because he's the one writing the script. You are the actor there. You are the actress there. So when it's as if frustration, everything is coming your way, have it at the back of your mind that God is a master word planner. Everything that you have seen today is still part of God's plan. There are some of you that if you have gotten what you have been looking for, the enemy would have killed you. All this time that is as if God is delaying you, he's just trying to fortify you. He wants you to be strong enough so that when the blessing go, you can stand it. Do you know that when people jump up, they will still come down? But God wants you to grow up so that you can stay up. Because when you grow up, you stay up. But for those that jump up, they still come down. So you don't need to go through corners. Go through the process. Let God build you. Let God work things out. And I tell you, your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' mighty name. I believe you remember the story of that man in John chapter 9 that was born blind. The disciples came. They thought it was only a sin that put people into the uh, midst of frustration. They said, Jesus, who has sinned? Is it the father or is it the mother? Because he's born blind. Who has sinned? And Jesus said, no one has sinned. What happened is that God is a master planner. He has planned this so that he can show forth his glory. So it doesn't matter any time that God decided to appear. By the time he appears, he will give you compensation. By the time he appears, he will decorate your life. It doesn't matter the time. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? He is the master planner. He's planning your life. Don't listen to what the devil is ministering to you. And hey, frustration. And hey, this is not happening. And hey, that one's not. No, he's the master planner. He's doing something over your life, over your destiny. That when people come to hear of it, when people come to hear of it, when people begin to see, in fact, before they get to you, they will start to accuse you. Although you have not told us, but we have heard it. That will be your testimony. That will be your testimony. I said, that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe you still remember Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego. They became the governor. But to become the governor, they had to pass through fire. That is God's strategy. That is God's plan. They had to break, pass through fire before they can become. That is the criteria to become the governor. Because on a good day, they have nothing at their disposal to become the governor. But they have to pass through fire. That is God's strategy. That is the plan of God for them to become a governor. Check every one of them that have succeeded in the Bible. So for the fact that you are going through feelings that makes you look frustrated, does not mean God has abandoned you. Does not mean you do not carry something unusual, something uncommon. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen to this one. And I know it will really, really bless you. How many of you remember Mary, the earthly mother of Jesus? The Bible says she was highly favored. But do you know that that favor almost cost her a marriage? That favor almost made her to become a laughing stock among other virgins. Now don't mind that. You know, we used to tell you, he's a, he's a virgin. This one, this one, this one, this one. 
But at the end of the day, we saw the glory of God. So there are times you may be highly favored and still go through frustration. At times you may be carrying the blessing, the glory of God, and still go through challenges. So challenges is not a sign for you to give up. It's a sign for you to know that God has a plan for you. It's a sign for you to know that God is taking you somewhere. And I tell you, all the plans of God for your life, the hour has come. They will start manifesting in the name of Jesus Christ. And do you still remember the story of Moses in the days of the Egyptians? They wanted to kill the Savior. They wanted to kill Moses. But look at the way God worked it out. They end up feeding Moses that they want to kill. They end up feeding him. They end up, you know, putting him to the best school. He was, you know, opportune to have all the best things in Egypt. That is the man they wanted to kill. What a master planner. What a master planner. Yes, sir. Yes, ma. Put your right hand on your head. I decree and I declare in the name of he that is above every other day that to everything that is making life difficult and you think you are frustrated, you think nothing good can come out of you. They are broken out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The hour has come in the name of he that is above every other name that the original master plan of God for our life will begin to come to manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, brethren, let me share with you to really, really help you to understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about God, the master planner. Mm. I'd like you to know it and understand that you cannot serve the most high God and be the most low in life. Mm. You can't serve the most high God and be the most low in life. God is involved of your life. And let me share with you the story of this man and then stop from there. And that is the story of the man you know very well. His name is Jonah. I believe you know Jonah very well. Jonah lived in Joppa. And God said, I want to send you to Nineveh to go and deliver my people. And the Bible said, you know, he decided he's not going to go. And then he was deciding to go to where? To Tarsus. I believe you still remember the story very yes. well. Now on a good day, on a good day, on a good day, if God has told Jonah, I said, Jonah, please, I want to send you on an emergency assignment. Please, you are going to go through the belly of the fish to Nineveh. What do you think will happen? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you should know what will happen. So even God has not said that, but God already knew that it is fish that is going to take him there. Do you know why? Geographically, from Joppa, where Jonah is, to uh, Nineveh, geographically, some scholars believe it is it will take 40 days. Some said 21 days. Now, let's take 21 days. That is about approximately three weeks. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Three weeks. Now, yes. and the, 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 what God wants to do in the life of Nineveh is so urgent that he needs somebody who will get there in three days. Please, <laughs> are, are you hearing what I'm saying? He needs somebody to get there in three days. Now, so he spoke to Jonah and said, Jonah, let's go. So when Jonah was saying, I will not go, I will not go, I will not deliver your message. No, I'm going on my way. He was still in the plan of God. That was still the master plan of God. When he was saying, I'm going nowhere, that was still the plan of God. So when he took to himself, he went to the ship and he paid his fear. Why? Because he was out of the will of God. Let's say he is in the will of God. He doesn't need to pay any fear because anyone that is in the will of God, God, take up the bills. Hmm. If you're in the will of God, God take up the bills. It's responsible for your bills. It's hmm. responsible for anything that you are going to Amen. Amen. He left the will of God Amen. and decided to run to where? To Tarsus. That is why he had to pay the bill. And you know what happened at the end of the day? They said, ah, this man, what is happening when the storm went against the ship? And they said, please, what can we do to you? He said, I will not go. Throw me into the river, not knowing that the boss that will take him. So mm. Nineveh is already what? Waiting. He's already waiting. Mm. Glory mm. be to God. I'm talking I about the God, the what? The master <laughs> plan. Amen. That is Amen. not the end. That is not the, that is not the end of it. Now, continue. As he got there, he spent three days doing what? Praying. What is the meaning of that? Consecration. Planning. Mm. Encounter with God. And because anyone that will work for God, you need an encounter. You need a message. Just like these three days, God gave his servant a message for us that we need to break yokes of what? Frustration. Mm -hmm. So he needs a message. He needs to have something. He needs to have something to show to the people that I did not come on my own. No, Somebody did what? Sent me. So in the process, he was busy preparing as he was going to fulfill the message. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. And so that is why he went there. Now, the people of Nineveh, they believe in the God of the water. So when they just saw fish bringing out Jonah and they preached the gospel, that is why they accepted it. Mm -hmm. You still remember that Jonah was not happy that they accepted the message. Do you still remember? He mm -hmm. was not happy that they accepted the message. Why? Because he was thinking that he was just preaching here. You will die. You will perish. And people were repenting. So he was angry. He said, ah, why now? Not knowing that <laughs> all, all these things, God was the one in charge. Plum. God was the one in charge. And that is why I like you to know it as a random that those frustrations that you are feeling mm. all around you, mm. they are shadows. Mm. They are fables. They are not really there. Mm. God is the master planner. He puts mm. them there. Mm. Probably for some of us, wake us up in our prayer life. Mm. In our Bible study, in our activities. He puts stand like a check. If you understand this revelation, anywhere you appear, you go, you see frustration, see you are running away. And that is what happened. That's why the Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil. Then what will happen? The devil will flee. So I like you to know it. I like you to understand it. That there's nothing called frustration. You only feel it because their master planner wants you to know that he's taking you somewhere. And at the end of the day, check your life. Your destiny, check from Genesis to Revelation. You see God doing wonders, doing great things, doing marvelous things, doing powerful things beyond our widest. Brother, we are children of God. We cannot be a beast and fight full time devil. Mm. Know it today. We can't be what? A part time Christian and fight who? A full time devil. We have to all stand our God our father, I see God doing for you that everything that is, I see the devil has planned against your life they are frustrated in the name of Jesus Christ let's agree together as we put our right hand on our chest in the name of he that is above every other name Amen. to everyone that is feeling any form of frustration let there be Amen. Amen. in the name of Amen. Jesus Amen. and let there be a way Amen. Let our Amen. story change to your glory in Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray. Is there anyone that does not know that you are the one involved in all Amen. these things? Prove to them. Let them see. Let them know Amen. that your word we see. Just like your servant has said, your light afresh will shine Amen. upon all that we do in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, Amen. Amen. We have Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Wow, thank That's you, Lord. Beautiful. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. For this thank blessed you. ministry. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much, sir. Thanks for being a blessed Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank thank you, you sir. Thank you. Thank thank you. You. God bless you. Thank well, you. We are greatly blessed. Thank you. Bless your ministry and your family. Amen. 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 Yeah, the Sunday is not coming on. Yeah, we cannot hear you. Hear me. Can you yeah, hear me yes. now? It's coming yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. It's thank coming. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for being part of what God is about to do and what he has started. I know mm. that the word was sent and it was delivered. There are mm. so many things packed with you. You can see that it is rushing that time. So to yes. bring all that God has revealed onto the table. And I know mm. that the, the, the short time we had, God spoke to me. God has spoken to you, Amen. and that word will break that yoke of frustration. Amen. So remember Amen. something out of the words that God sent that is for you. And that word Amen. will go with you tonight and will be the forerunner to give you victory in the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. In, your, in your career, in your marriage. In your relationship, concerning Amen. your children, concerning Amen. your life, concerning your future, every Amen. area of life, your businesses, anything Amen. that is frustrating, Amen. they are already broken in that Amen. day of Jesus. God Amen. is the master planner, is the Amen. one that will do it. He has set it up that way. Do not get dead discouraged. Do not give up. God will eventually take the glory. God Amen. will eventually Amen. take the glory. 
God Amen. will eventually take the glory. Amen. Thank you. You cannot take Amen. the glory. You Amen. cannot Amen. be stranded. You cannot be frustrated. God Amen. will turn Amen. it around. God Amen. will turn it around. Amen. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. In the name Amen. of Jesus.